Hola, 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 buenos días, everybody. Welcome to the 5KP uh, program video for today. It's Tuesday, 27th April 2021. Uh, it's Adam, as always, speaking from Quito, Ecuador, and today we'll have a very special program, as always, we have a special programs, uh, divided into two parts, like last week. First part for YouTubers, second part for my Option Mindful Academy students, and uh, both of them will have some interesting content, uh, to which I will jump in just a minute. Before we go there, of course, remember this video is for informational and educational purposes only, okay? Uh, I'm not giving any advice here, so if you're looking at me trading my portfolio and so on, and when I'm talking about some tickers, some companies that I'm investing in and playing around with, this is just for education, this is for showing you how I do things and uh, for you to learn and not copy me and then blame for, uh, you know, if something goes down or whatever, in a way you didn't expect it to go. I don't have a crystal ball, I can't predict the future, same as you can't, but we can do an extremely good job on, you know, doing research, understanding uh, option trades, understanding technical analysis, fundamentals, and based on all this knowledge, we can make some good decisions. Uh, and that's what we're learning here. So, let's move on and I show you what this program is going to be all about. So, uh, parts, uh, part one and part two. Uh, for the YouTubers, what I have is, we'll do a short analysis of the portfolio performance, so what, what is going on in there, our thetas, deltas, and so on. Uh, you know, how the portfolio is built and, uh, you know, how we're performing, basically. The goal of this program, as you remember, is to trade for one year and double the account. So uh, we started with 5K, now we did 7 something, 7 point something K, and uh, go on our way to uh, 10K. And I promise to do that in one year. Of course, this is a goal. Uh, we may or may not reach it, uh, but, you know, we're quite well on the way already. Uh, and for YouTubers, uh, analysis of the WMT trade. So I did that trade a couple weeks ago. It's a broken wing butterfly. It's a trade which is uh, kind of moving sideways. And I'll do a little analysis of this uh, uh, for, for everyone to see. And for Option Multiple Academy students, after, you know, um, after I finish part one, uh, I have more analysis of the positions uh, that we have in the portfolio. We will discuss also new trades. Whoops. We will discuss the new trades and uh, basically actually we focus on trade ideas because uh, as you can see here in the portfolio we don't have too many available dollars for trading actually when many positions that we have here will expire this week and then that will free the dollars for investing but you know even though we cannot do new trades maybe today uh, we can certainly have trade ideas and prepare to trade something next week so uh, what I have for you today is analysis of junior miners uh, and yeah, there we go twice. Uh, yes, analysis of junior miners. These are these two companies here and I will tell you how I found them and how I figured that this, this could be interesting investments and you know the knowledge that I will share here you can use further for analysis of any company that you may find out there publicly traded. Uh, okay, uh, probably this was uh, meant to be analysis of Intel. Uh, what, why Intel? Why do I suddenly bring in Intel uh, to all this portfolio, which is like full of uh, defensive stocks and mining sector and gold and silver and uranium? Well, Intel just announced earnings, uh, I think a day or two days ago or something like this. And of course, uh, Intel has a terrible history of earnings performance, uh, where they lose typically around 10%. Uh, you know, on the stock value, and uh, they didn't uh, surprise this time again. Uh, so uh, the stock price went down. And when you look at the uh, price earnings ratio, so PE ratio of Intel, it seems to be a really valued company, valuable company. You know, in terms of uh, how much value is there in Intel, it's basically PE ratios around 11, which is uh, something absolutely unseen for the companies like uh, in the tech sector. Uh, they all seem to have very, very high P.E. ratios, which suggest that these companies may be in the bubble. Intel is an exception. And uh, I don't know, maybe Intel is kind of hated, but remember that uh, Intel, the company, is in semiconductor uh, you know, uh, space. And these things, computers, semiconductors, you know, these things just 
you know, they're just not gonna go anywhere. Uh, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about Intel here and what kind of trade we're gonna be doing there. And in the end, I'm gonna tell you why do I store my savings in PSLV rather than cryptos. And remember, keyword here, my savings, okay? I'm not saying I'm not trading cryptos or, you know, silver is better than any crypto out there. I'm not saying this kind of things. I'm just saying, I'm gonna to explain to you why do I choose to store my savings in funds like PSLV, physical silver, also physical silver itself, rather than in cryptos, okay? And uh, with that, we'll finish the program for today. So let's move on and uh, start with uh, analysis a little bit of the market and uh, doing our portfolio performance. And then we do the WMT guys. So first of all, I'm going to switch to, as always, switch to my browser and see what's going on on the markets today. Uh, I'm recording this pretty late. So markets have been running for a while already. Uh, and we can see some uh, updates here. So uh, strong today, energy, industrials and fi financials, uh, weak information, technology, healthcare and utilities. Remember also that lots of companies have been and are announcing earnings here in, in the end of April. And today is probably also earnings day and very critical earnings day. So large cap indices uh, trade uh, little change. Market awaits key earnings after the close. So today's announcement of lots of earnings that can move the market. Tomorrow can, we can see something really crazy on the market. UPS rise 11% on earnings, okay? Tesla is down following its report. So Tesla reported and UPS, and one of them went up like crazy. Tesla went down like crazy. You can see how what earnings are doing actually to, to stocks. And we are in the earnings season. Things are getting volatile. Things are starting moving up and down. Markets don't show that. You see on the market down, Nasdaq, S&P 500, you know, they're moving sideways, not much happening there. Uh, and But I want to bring also your attention to uh, the economic calendar. And what's happening this uh, week is uh, tomorrow on Wednesday. Uh, what you can see is we have FOMC statement, federal funds rate. This is, you know, interest rates. I don't expect this to change. Actually, this box you can see change from red to orange. That makes me smile because, you know, if, if these guys would announce all of a sudden negative or kind of high rates, that would be, you know, a red thing, you know, like move, it would move market a lot, but nobody expects that. Nobody would say like they can't do that. OK, uh, FOMC press conference. So lots of Federal Reserve Reserve statements. Uh, so we can hear some Powell speeches, maybe. And, uh, you know, this typically has some uh, causes some movement on the market. Uh, on Thursday, you see the GDP numbers okay, being uh, announced. And, you know, forecast is 6.8, you know, growth, uh, you know, compared to the 4.3 that was previously reported. So they expect some kind of higher number there. Of course, if we go below that, uh, that can have negative impact on the market. If it has a higher number, it may actually be like, yeah, you know, you see economy is amazing. We're recovering, which is also a bunch of lies. And, uh, okay. So that's what we can expect. So Wednesday is critical and Thursday also and Friday are, are typically like weird days. So uh, pay attention to these two. Uh, next week, uh, well, just unemployment rates. What do you expect, guys? You know, like average, you know, the unemployment is going crazy in, uh, you know, in the US. So many new people, uh, you know, filing for unemployment, meaning people who never filed, filing for the first time. It's like around 500,000 people a week. And uh, that's pretty crazy, huh? Uh, and we are having such a good uh, markets right now, even though people are losing their jobs. You know, look at S&P 500. If I go to here, obviously I, I've been analyzing Intel. Uh, S&P 500 futures, you see people are fighting for unemployment yeah, every week, you know, and we are like just going up and up and up and up and up, okay? Uh, all of you know who've been following me for a while why this is happening because we've been talking about this and you know, just keep repeating myself about this all the time. Well, uh, you know, to me, the market is in a, a huge, huge bubble which is going to pop one day. And the just question is which direction we're creating a lot of new currencies and, you know, that will definitely result in, in, in inflation. Maybe not now, you know, it always comes with a little delay. Uh, but people already started observing that prices are rising, you know, even here in Ecuador, I can tell you guys like prices of 
Uh, Ecuador is a country where the primary currency here used is uh, dollar, US dollar. They don't have their own currency, they use US dollar. Uh, tickets for buses up 15% to 20 and uh, food uh, prices higher. You know, um, it's very hard to negotiate uh, sometimes on the street. You know, people don't, you know, the dollar is losing clearly value here and everybody kind of sees it, they don't know why. But that's happening even in Ecuador, but in the US, what people report is, is incredible, like prices in the restaurants, 40% up. Uh, food prices, lumber, all these commodities are uh, super expensive now. Uh, obviously, uh, did something change? Like, uh, you know, like now lumber is like not growing, the trees are not growing anymore or whatever. No, we just have, we just have uh, many, many more dollars available, much more liquidity, all these stimulus checks. You know, we still clearly see signs of inflation. So in inflationary times, uh, what may possibly happen to the stock market? Well, you know, if you have a shares of company like Intel, you know, measured in all dollar, now we have more dollar. Uh, well, then, you know, in inflationary times, the values of these shares, you know, they're gonna go up in price as well. That's just like a no-brainer, you know, until we end this stuff. So, uh, what I'm predicting for this market? Well, I'm thinking it's going to keep going up, guys. It's just going to keep going up. We may have some massive correction. This market is due to correction, you know, the massive correction. Uh, but will it happen? And when will it happen? Uh, that's a big question mark. It's, for now, it seems uh, like dollar value is cratering, you know. So, if you compare it to the other currencies, Dixie, the index, shows us the dollar has been reaching, you know, like the the lowest purchasing power ever it had, like lowest lows. Uh, then you look, look at the 10-year uh, uh, 10 uh, treasury bonds stabilizing, you know, in price. And the uh, and stock market just keep going up. Commodities going up, except gold and silver. That's very surprising. So, uh, <laughs> no, it's not. So what you can see, guys, you know, we're having this little, like really, it's like kind of like according to expectations, just run, run, run flag it a little bit, you know, and keep going. You know, we will see what happens on Wednesday, but I don't expect like massive corrections. If some real big shit happens, guys, then we may expect some kind of drop uh, in prices. I don't know, because it's completely overvalued market. It's, it's, it's just crazy. Uh, but, you know, the current policies don't show me that, you know, uh, this thing's just weak and just gonna keep going down uh, or, or just crash. Uh, and also looking at VIX helps uh, having that kind of, uh, I don't know, perspective on, on this market. So it should crash and it, if it would, it would go like 50-60% down in one day or two. But you see VIX, you know, nobody's really afraid of a crash anymore. You know, 17.71, it's like way lower than 20s. Uh, it has been in this high level numbers for around a year, okay, since the, the pandemic happened. Uh, you know, the, then, uh, you know, it's stabilized here and we're back to the times pre, pre-pandemic. So what, what is going on? Are we really, like, what about the people who filed for unemployment? What about, you know, all these uh, guys who lost their jobs? What about the rising prices? What about the travel restrictions? What about companies not making money on, you know, traveling buses? You know, people can only, you know, as, you know there can be, in Ecuador, for example, you can only fill the bus half uh, way, so you cannot put all the passengers in there, you know, and uh, it cannot be using all the space in the bus because of the pandemic. So, uh, you know, what about all these companies? What about all these restaurants? Uh, I mean, like, it's still not solved, right? So why are we back into the, you know, volatilities of levels of pre-corona, pre, you know, pre-pandemic? I don't know. So uh, looks like there is definitely something dodgy going on. Low, low VIX suggests low fees on options and not so much fear. Uh, however, we all know, because I've been talking about this since uh, months, that this number, you know, it's very volatile in itself. And uh, what do I mean is that we're seeing 17 today, but if something big happens tomorrow, we can see it crashing and going up to 34. Yeah? So, you know, nice to see it here, but uh, market is still spooked, you know, it's not... It's not like that we are, we are all, you know, we found solution to all our problems and we're getting out of this situation, you know, and then everything's going to be like it used to be before. No, it's not going to be like it used to be before. 
Um, so uh, it's a big, big lie, guys. Yeah. So uh, VIX on VIX, so <laughs> VVIX, uh, dropped down. Looks like you know there is not expectation of VIX going up uh, again. You know, it just dropped down. So everything is great. Um, okay, that's that's what we need to see when we're trading. Uh, it's some people call it freak show. It is a freak show. I really, really agree. Um, so we analyze the calendar, we look at the FinVis a little bit just to have a quick overview of the news. I'm not going to read them to you, you need to check them out by yourself. There is some information about uh, the pandemic and so on, but just have an overview. Uh, Dow going up, Nasdaq dropped a little bit, it had a run yesterday. Drop down, okay, and move sideways today, and S&P moving sideways, so we kind of like still bullish, yeah, in the bullish zone, you see mixed uh, here the map is mixed also the earnings are coming so this can cause some movements there some volatility uh, and if I scroll down uh, I always want to have a look here at the uh, crude oil going up 62 uh, bucks barrel this is pretty good you know like and I, I told you it's gonna go up and up and up guys uh, so uh, oil is gonna go up and actually we should be looking at companies, trading companies which are doing something with oil because why? Because uh, what I'm thinking is, uh, and I actually explained this to my students uh, from uh, weekly mentoring videos, that uh, you know when this inflation is going to be hitting us uh, pretty hard, uh, people will start asking questions, what's going on? You know, why are we, why am I paying now 40% more for, I don't know, in, when I go to a restaurant for a meal? Uh, what's going on? Why do I have to pay so much for the wood? And government tells me, and CPI numbers, so consumer price index, tells me that the inflation rate is around 2%. So why am I paying so much for all this stuff? Well, some people call CPI a CP lie, because it is a lie. And uh, what the government will do, or the you know Federal Reserve, but the government mostly explaining it to people, why are the prices rising? No, 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 it's not because Fed created additional two trillions and gave the currency away to the people, you know, like with the stimulus checks. No, 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 it's, it's not uh, around that. It's, uh, it's because, you know, oil prices are rising. And if oil prices are rising, that means you will have a higher cost of food production, you will have a higher cost of mining stuff out of the ground, you will have a higher cost of transportation, you will have a higher cost of everything because, you know, oil used to be so cheap and now it's going up and up and so expensive. So obviously you can explain higher inflation by blaming it on oil, okay, because oil is the most used commodity in uh, production, right? Right now we're not depending on only on like uh, electric energy. Especially, you know, if you produce some food on the uh, on the field, you're not running Teslas there to harvest uh, the food. You're running tractors operating on oil and so on. So this is what I'm predicting here. And that's what's going to happen. Uh, natural gas up, uh, gold a little bit sideways down. Uh, well, no surprise here. Dow and S&P moving sideways also and so on. So uh, that's our overview. So how to trade this market? Well, to me, it's still bullish. It's still moving. You know, it's kind of lost its power here. Uh, if you look at the S&P 500, it's not in this uh, huge run. It lost a little bit of power, but it's going to go up. It's going to go up. There is nowhere else for it to go unless it crashes, you know, but uh, if it doesn't, it's going to go up. So um, we're going to be trading cautiously but being bullish you know having bullish positions and i'm also still preferring to invest in stocks which have value not the stocks which are growth stocks you know um, i can speculate with those but investing is going only into the valuable assets and that's why we together with the students today uh, for you guys we'll be talking about intel and investing in companies like uh, mining in the mining sector which have low pe ratios okay so that's it and let's move to the portfolio because that was part of the plan and uh, so what's going on here in the portfolio well how are we performing first of all so i'm just going to highlight some numbers so we are 7.25k 7 so compared to the last week you see we're kind of moving sideways nothing really happens uh we're staying the same number so year to date it's around 2.45k uh, uh, profit year to date so starting from january and you know we have multiple positions and as i explained last time most of them are uh, in the mining sector valuable companies which dig stuff out of the ground and we have some 
speculative assets here with, uh, with AT&T and Walmart. And this one I will discuss with you guys, YouTubers as well. But looking at the numbers here, uh, you can see Vega and Theta. Vega is just volatility. So how uh, much will this portfolio change if volatility goes up by one point on SPY? Well, then, you know, probably the, the portfolio value will increase by uh, you know, um, 18 bucks and so on. Uh, is this, yeah, no, it's not really like correlated. Actually, it's uh, volatility on each and every item. So if volatility increases here by one point on every, on these items, well, you know, but it's anyway correlated with S&P 500, then you can expect, you know, this kind of movement. So it's not a huge number, yeah? Uh, on the other hand, we have our theta here. And theta is 1422. Uh, meaning that every day as the time passes, this portfolio will be making $14.21 on the premiums uh, that are you know, coming from the promises that I sold to people on the option market. And you see that most of these numbers are positive. I have some negative numbers here on NEM. That's just because of price calculation. This is something that is clearly going to expire out of the money. So I'm going to keep premium. And it's already reached its max profit. I could be closing this, but I would have to pay some fees and it's just $20 trade. So I don't want to lose another five bucks out of this. That's way too much. I'm just gonna let it expire. And uh, we have also one negative number here on SPY. Okay, that's our insurance, I remember. I bought some insurance, uh, you know, at the level of 350, uh, you know, uh, now S&P is 100 trading 417 bucks but I used the time of low volatility uh, to buy this to not pay too much for the insurance uh, you know you see that VIX is still very low so it's still a good time to buy this but you know it may be too late when something starts crashing or moving crazy especially in the earnings announcements times you know uh, if if suddenly there is, of course, will, I expect good numbers there, but if suddenly there is a sell-off of everything, you know, you never know with this kind of stock market. It's a casino, it's a freak show, so you never know. Uh, I prefer to have it cheaper and then if volatility goes up, this contract will increase in value. So I'm, uh, I'm not expecting the price of S&P go down to 350s. If it did and we had a crash, okay, I'm protected. But I'm expecting that what may happen is that it may correct a little bit and the volatility can go up and I can actually make some profit on this insurance and that will also protect the other positions. So uh, if I have some losses on the others, you know, this will pay for it. I also have an, uh, a contract here, which I sold here. So uh, just to reduce the cost of owning this insurance. Uh, okay, so uh, that's the one which taking 1.3 bucks uh, per day down for the next uh, 143 days. That's what is gonna be doing and probably increase a little bit as we get to the expiry i'm not intending to hold it till the end so if my students ask me like if you buy this insurance do you keep it until it completely expires or do you you know uh swap it at some point of time well if you remember from the discover option trading course which i'm doing with you guys you know you can access on uh, option mindful uh, you see that theta and time decay looks like this, you know, the, the chart of time decay. So if you are the last 30 days until expiry, time kills you very, very fast, bringing the value of an option contract, the one which you buy, uh, to zero, of course, because time takes this expiry, game over. The contract expires with, uh, you know, no cash. But until before, you know, 30 days, uh, until expiry, 60 and let's see, 143 days here, well, the time takes very slow. So. Uh, why would I keep it still and let it go down completely? You know, if, uh, you know, I still have a lot of value in it and I see that, okay, now the insurance starts really keep hitting me from the Theta perspective. Of course, I would swap it for a new one. So I would buy it back. I would, I would sell it actually, you know, buy back this one, but sell this one and, uh, you know, buy back the insurance, you know, <laughs> let's say, but that means just selling this put contract. Uh, with you know whatever is remaining there in the time value and then buy another one with also 143 days until expiry of course in VIX, if VIX is low so that's what I would be doing yeah so I'm not intending to keep this till the end uh, okay so uh, and then we have another negative number with negative theta here uh, costing us 175 per day on Walmart trade okay this trade is losing it used to be making like 80 something bucks and I didn't close it because I expected it to go uh, but it corrected actually <laughs> in the opposite direction 
And I didn't close that trade because I wanted to talk to you about it and if, if this is worth closing or, or should we keep it. So as you can see, if I open the Walmart position, we have three contracts there, right, running. So uh, no, actually we have four contracts, but uh, with three different strike prices and uh, they all expire 21st of May. So they have 24 days until the expiry. And this is a, this combination builds a broken wing butterfly. Okay. So uh, it's really nice to see that it's back to zero. <laughs> so broken wing butterfly. What was my intention with broken wing butterfly with this trade? So let's just simply click a Walmart here and this links it to the chart. And I'm going to load my chart here on Walmart. And what you can see here, why was I so bullish on it? Because I saw it flagging for a while and I expected it to fill this gap here in between, uh, you know, 145 here and whatever it was here, 140. So five points move, you know. So it was flagging, flagging, really wanted to go up, sitting on top of 200 day moving average. Every sign on earth was telling me that this is going to go and uh, bounce off that uh, support line and just keep going and at least reach 145. But what happened instead is it broke through this 200-day uh, moving average, through this uh, level of support, which it was having here at 140, and came down to 138, okay? And now it bounced off 138. And uh, what am I thinking about this now? Did I become, they become less bullish on it? Do I think now it's time to get rid of it? Uh, well, you know, the time is definitely critical here. It's hitting us. Uh, we have 100, we have 23 days for this to make a move. So if we add this 23 days, we are now in 27th of April. Uh, so it's going to move us to May 21. Okay. And that's going to be somewhere here. And that's why I have this cone of probabilities here. Uh, that's something that markets predicts where, where this can go. And I see that it's still quite likely you know, to fill that gap even before, you know, if, if we if just run according to this cone would be fantastic. But uh, it can fill this gap definitely until May 21st is somewhere here. That's the level which I expected to get, 145 bucks. That would be somewhere here, May 21. So the cone of probability says that 68% of the time, you know, the price of Walmart will end up somewhere within this cone, okay? So my target is here, T, target. I'm ex what I'm expecting is that this thing will bounce and come back and somehow move and end up somewhere here, yeah? Obviously, if we did that, I would get out of the trade. Uh, what market says, it can do anything within this cone, okay? So now, uh, should I get out? Is my ch are my chances, uh, you know, lower now? Well, I decided to take some risk in this trade anyway. It's a speculative trade. So uh, I'm okay with that still. And why? Because technically looking, the pattern didn't change. Uh, what you see here is this W pattern, okay? With uh, some sort of uh, flagging here. And what it did now, it did something what I call kiss hello, because at the level of 135, somewhere there, at the level of where we have this 50 day moving average is a strong support zone and uh, for this and also on this side with strong resistance but strong support zone and what the w typically pattern won't do what do we see with this pattern typically is that the price goes up comes down creates w then it stays for a while typically it does it faster than somewhere here but now it console it went longer time created this flag came back down and this is called kiss hello zone and from kiss hello we typically see something like that so i'm still not resigning from this trade because i see that it has still potential, even if it bounces here from uh, 135. So this would be the zone where I'm saying, no, that's game over. If you break through this, I'm not, I'm leaving this trade. That doesn't make any sense. It's not going to go anywhere time soon towards this 145, which I thought it can go. But as long as it stays at this, uh, you know, holds this support zone around here, 138, 135, don't, does not break through 50 day moving average, I'm going to give it a little bit more time and see if this can come back up and go for its uh, keys hello. So I'm not going to be leaving. I still see that this has potential. And uh, well, right now you see that they just moved a little bit up. Uh, but as, as soon as I will see it go above 140, I will be very bullish on this, you know. So um, 
and I'm staying in this position. So from the perspective of uh, analyzing risk profile, so for those of you who don't know this, this is the uh, price, uh, you know, area here where we seeing the price of uh, the Walmart going from 125 here until 180, and on the y axis you see zero point. That's our profits. We either generate profit or we generate losses. So blue line is value of the contract at the expiry. Pink line is value right now. We are sitting at the zero zone, right? Break even point right now. If I reset the slices, okay, I will reset the slices. You see that we are sitting basically at break even point. And uh, you know what would be fantastic is if this really bounced and started going up. And I'm thinking my target now would be you know maybe not even waiting until it gets to 145. If it just breaks through 140 and goes to somewhere 141, 142, I would be making 100 bucks on this, around 100 bucks, you know, 90 bucks or something. And I think this is where I'm going to define my exit. I could set up this exit automatically, or I can just keep observing. Uh, I think I will just do the observation right now because uh, I'm looking at this portfolio every day anyway. Uh, but you can see what is the potential here. So if we drop to 135, I said if we go below, I'm getting out, you know. So below would be 134.95. I would be losing around 80 bucks. So that would be all my risk taken in this trade is this. Uh, so I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to sacrifice. I paid for the entire trade $183, right? So, But I'm willing to sacrifice 100 of this. Uh, for another couple days, you know, 10 days and so on to see where Walmart is going to go. If in 10 days it goes up, fantastic, I'm going to take my profits wherever it gets. If it doesn't, you know, I'm going to get out. So uh, typically, you know, if you see very bullish charts like this, you know, looking very bullish, if you are here, you, you really think it's very bullish, uh, you don't build butterflies, uh, broken wing butterflies, uh, with longer... Uh, you know, longer time till expiry because you want that movement, you know, to happen very quickly. And if it does, then you generate profits very, very quickly. As you can see, looking at the pink line, you know, you're going to generate profits very quickly. If I had more time in it, that line would be much flatter. Okay. And it could mean that, you know, Walmart goes there, has more time to go there, but I won't see big results very quickly. Okay. So in this case, uh, how does that look like? The contract, we have uh, bought one call contract at 140. That's the level where we bought one until my 21. Uh, and then we sold two contracts here at the level of 150 and 155. We bought another one uh, here, uh, you know, uh, to complete our broken wing butterfly. So this trade, this risk chart re really looks very nice. Um, if it had a little bit more time, I would be happy right now because I didn't expect this correction, but I'm still quite bullish on Walmart. I don't think it's going to be crashing or, uh, you know, going down back to these levels of 130. So it could bounce a little bit of uh, the 50-day moving average. If it goes below that, I'm out. But I think it's it's going to come back up uh, quite quickly, break through this 200-day uh, moving average again. The problem here is that, you know, this 200-day moving average became, right now, became uh, a resistance, okay? So it have to break through it. If it does that, there is nothing to stop it, okay? So, um... That was really not nice thing to observe here, you know, that it break through and went down. But now it's coming back up. I, I give it a couple of days to see if it's going to test this 200-day moving average, this 140 level zone. If it bounces back down, uh, well, I'm going to be maybe less positive about it. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah. So again, one, 100 bucks is max that I want to lose on this trade if it doesn't go my way. If it does, I want to make 100. Okay. So uh, that's the analysis, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you want to learn more, of course, uh, I want to welcome you all to my Insta profile, uh, the web page, of course, the academyoptionmindful.com, where you can learn about the courses and you can also sign up for mentoring programs there. Uh, you know, you can go to the YouTube channel. Not many subscribers here, but this video is <laughs> obviously if you're watching this, you. You've seen this channel and subscribe please to be notified about the new videos and also if you like join my twitter and the list of uh, people i follow you know you can go and copy that because there is for your private profile there is lots of cool 
cool people there uh, talking about cool things like uh, cryptos and mining sector and so on. Uh, I try to collect really good guys in there. Uh, not all of them are quality guys, but I'm trying to filter and just leave the group of uh, amazing people on that list. Uh, so obviously you're welcome to visit. Okay, so now I'm gonna go and move to the part for my students. Okay, so part two.